Hello everybody. Gonna do a quick thing about animating menus. If you know how to animate menus, move along. If not, I'm gonna teach you right now. So the basic key to animating menus is to creating is you have to create the animations. Uh, and you'll probably want to watch a tutorial on that in specific because I'm gonna teach you how to do the menu half. One of the things to keep in mind is that these buttons, when you turn them off, when you do the set active, they actually take 0.15 seconds to turn off. I'm not sure why that is, but you have to adjust your animations uh, to, to keep that in mind. Anyhow, once you've created your animations, I generally create two, slide open and slide closed, or whatever I need. I, I create an open and a closed version of each, uh, or you know, uh, move in and move out, or whatever it is that you're doing. And uh, you can use the same one backwards, but often you'll be juggling variables and it's a little bit complex to try and make them work out if you play the animation backwards. If you try it, you'll see what I mean. Uh, anyhow, uh, once you've got your animations, you should be able to just stick them in a animation controller. In fact, chances are pretty high that you had to create one in order to create your animations in the first place. So on your menu, you have an animator and an animation controller, both of which you create fresh, generally before you start your animating. And in here, there is your animations, are your animations. These should be added automatically. If not, you've probably mistargeted something and you have to start over. Uh, you could try dragging them in and hoping. If you are going to do this uh, by using one animation in reverse, then either the closed or the open animation would have a speed of negative one, just so you're aware. Now the key to this whole shebang is that these parameters exist, open and close. These are not booleans, these are triggers. Triggers are nice for a lot of reasons. First off, they turn themselves off when they're done, and that's really useful. Uh, second off, they can be triggered from a Unity event. Set bool can't be, and the reason for that is uh, that the actual um, uh, the actual Unity events don't take two arguments, and set bool requires two arguments. Set trigger only requires one argument, so it does work. I'll go ahead and show you that here in open button where I've got the set trigger open and then down here in close button I've got the set trigger closed and if you look there's no set bool can't do it so use triggers and of course in the actual animator it's just a matter of wiring those triggers up so here's my transition when you get the close trigger move down when you get the open trigger move up and it's just that simple. Uh, if you don't want to use a button to expand, if you have some other kind of thing you're trying to do, then just uni use another Unity event in a different place. It's very, very straightforward. For example, I could actually make this trigger happen when I mouse over this menu. So if I were to mouse over it, it would expand automatically, and then when I move my mouse off of it, it would close automatically. I might as well show you how to do that while I've got you here, since that's another slightly complex thing to do. The reason that's complex is actually just because uh, we don't have the... Um, uh, the event system we need built into it. We need the event triggers. These event triggers are not commonly used, so you have to add them yourself. And we'll just use a pointer exit and a pointer enter, uh, you know, some order. And we're going to go ahead and drop the work menu in both of these. And we're going to use a set trigger. I recommend using the set trigger string. It's not going to be slow. You don't have to worry about that. Um, you just have to make sure you don't misspell anything like that. And so I hit play now, and then I mouse over. Yoop, yoop. That's interesting. That panel doesn't actually. Oh, it's part of the mask. The panel is part of the mask, so I actually put that on the wrong thing. Um, let's go ahead and drop that on the mask instead. There we go. Now it's on the mask. Everything's still intact. Hit play. The mask is actually the thing that contains the visuals, so that's why. And there you go. Easy as pie. Of course, you probably don't want to have both of these at the same time, but it's up to you. Hmm. Definitely don't want to have both at the same time. <laughs> 